Hey everyone, my name's Kaoru Hakaze. I was born in November 3rd. <coughs> hey everyone, Feather Heartache is the only song ever here, so I took a long time off to get this video done. Mostly because, well, I'm lazy, and secondly, more importantly, my editing software likes to do a thing called crashing despite me doing absolutely nothing. Because of that, I'm going to write a very sincere letter to the people at Magic's headquarters that my friendship with Vegas Pro has officially ended. DaVinci Resolve is now my new best friend. Now, how did I actually listen to the soundtrack if those a- that happy elements region locked the entire discography? Well, conveniently, there's a playlist on YouTube that pretty much has everything. Shout out to Skurveri for this one. You are a legend, solely because I don't have to use SoundCloud to listen to every song. I had a glimpse in there, and what the hell, since this video is gonna have a lot of weird, awful, agreeable, and psychotic takes, I hope throughout this you constantly ask me if I even like music to begin with. I'll be leaving timestamps so you can just skip to your favorite unit. Enjoy. Shut up! Okay, so for Knights, they have the best singers in the game. <laughs> it's no, it's no competition. Sukasa is personally my favorite. Izumi, um, I, I don't know. Some of these songs, while not great, I gave them too much hate on first listen. Uh, Chorus Skip Breeze is one. I don't know what went through my mind to call this song bad. G genuinely psychotic. Nowadays, I find the song to be alright. Same story goes for Promise Swords and Silent Oath. For a song like Little Romance, I can imagine it being used in the soundtrack for a late 2000s New York rom-com, where an unlikely couple learns what true love really means. Oh yeah, this is the best night song, by the way. I had this in the background while playing GTA 4 one time, and thought... Yeah, yeah, that fits. Yeah. Grateful Allegiance reminds me of this one song that couldn't stop playing on the radio a few years back. It was a D&B song done by Netsky, and I'm not really that big on that style of drum and bass, so that also applies to Grateful Allegiance too. But hey, if they did a D&B OnStar song in the vein of Pink Panthers, then I'd be on board so fast. Usually I'd praise their songs for having the best vocals, which they obviously do, especially from these two. I instantly wrote off at least half of these songs because of those instrumentals, bro. A lot of them scream pirating Vegas Pro 13 on a notepad tutorial type music. The worst offenders are Article of Faith, Voice of Sword, and Fight for Judge. A piece of me died listening to those songs, and the vocals weren't enough to save them either. Someone needs to hire a better producer for these guys. Actually, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me try, I got something. <laughs> you ever had that moment where you find a really great song? Then you listen to the album and go, What, what, what is this? This is, this is ass. Um, that's exactly how I felt listening to this unit. It's no secret that Secret Gravity is my favorite OnStar song, and I was excited to hear what these guys had to offer. So imagine my disappointment when I listened to these songs. It's kind of the same problem I had with Knights. And the funny thing is, Secret Gravity is cut from the exact same cloth as all these other songs. It's just that, somehow, this one time, all the right pieces came together to make a true masterpiece. I don't know, maybe Secret Gravity is just as bad as these other songs. And I've gaslit myself into thinking that it's good. No, that's not true either. Maybe the teaspoon of magic Natsume left in my heart was some crack cocaine. <laughs> A song I really wanted to like was Amoi no Kakera. The laid-back sound of the verses was something I really got behind. Yura, yura, but then by the chorus, I kind of just lost interest. I'm convinced that the song can be better if they dropped what they did for that chorus. For now, I'll spend the rest of my days dreaming of the song that could have been. It might have been the next Secret Gravity, actually. Yeah, remember when I gave this guy a 1 for his solo? Alright, you got that? Now, I want you to imagine the horrified look on my face when I found out that he has about 8 other solo songs. Oh my. Uh, the track, That's Alright, it has bagpipes, autotune, wait, hold on, what the fuck? Is that fucking Belarus? Uh, <laughs> words cannot comprehend, just, uh, why? Oh, whatever, at least it's a fun song. Also, someone tell me why in the music video for Hello New Year, 
Why is he copping that uh, LSD cult leader fit? Oh wait, maybe I shouldn't be talking smack about this guy right now. I'm certain he's gonna send some disciples to dome me now. While I'm not exactly a fan of Mam, at least we get double face. Uh, this time round, Madara stole a pink-haired guy off the street and just forced him into being in an idol group with him, I guess. I do feel sorry for the guy, but this is a good change. Stippling is one of my favorites here. The chorus is this weird blend of the usual anime strings affair, but the inclusion of the 909 hi-hat gives this a sort of house feel to it. I also like the extra layer of arpeggiated dial tones sprinkled on top. I love this song. I'd also recommend No Name Yet for that type of soft, laid-back electronic sound. And as far as misses go, I think Secret of Metropolis is one for me. I've seen quite a few people compare this to 80s funk music, and yeah, I see the influence. But this ain't Michael Jackson, this is Mikhail Jackson. I do find this unit to be the most interesting, and they're also one of the newest here. I'm not exactly sure if Double Face is a permanent group or something to return to every now and then. Either way, I'm a bit curious to see where they go with this. The Genesis, unlike the one you'd find in the Torah, is... Not good. Dance in the Apocalypse and Exceed as well, they're not good either. In fact, I did not like a major portion of the music here. Mostly due in part to that early to mid 2010s K-pop sound that I'm not exactly big on, save for a handful of tracks. But that's just the Eden gig, since they also split the group into the two halves, Adam and Eve. <laughs> Get it? It's like the Bible burn! Eve has Trap For You, where the most noteworthy thing is the music video with the kissing. And it's also Ska, like, come on, it's Ska, right? Ska in a weeb game. That's... That's absolutely big, you know what I'm saying, bro? They also have Sunlit Smile, which is just Chorus Get Breeze, but at home. No one can do a summertime song better than Chorus Get Breeze, let's be fair here. For the other half, Adam, their first two songs were more of the dramatic anime opening sound. I found them alright, no strong feelings towards them. Then their most recent song, Melting Rogue Soul, came along. It's that type of K-pop instrumental that lets everyone know that they're bad boys. It also involves a lot of groin rubbing. Simply put, a <laughs> Blackpink reject song. Also, Ibarra hits a high note here, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm not exactly a fan. Let's move on. Valkyrie is an interesting unit. I read up on Mika's character summary on the fan wiki and... My guy, are you okay? D do you want someone to talk to? Things aren't looking too good with Shu either. He for some reason has that doll he speaks to, and he canonically has a type of DID. It might be one of the wiki writers projecting, but I think that's still something to consider. Alright, there was a third member, but then some drama drama happened and he left. Maybe he saw how unhinged these two were and just up and dipped the hell out of there. Honestly, same, Mr. Third Member. Same. Alright, the music. Even though their group is this neoclassical Victorian-era mishmash, I once said that Shu's solo had no harpsichord in sight. After hearing these guys as a unit, I can safely say that I was very wrong, and there are in fact harpsichords. In spades, even. Let me just, uh, put forth my biases and say that Valkyrie's one of the best units in the game. Castle Built on Sand is genuinely a great, great song. A nice last hurrah for the unit before third member Von Tavius got out of there. I'd also heavily vouch for Miwakugeki and Last Ramen. I, I might even throw in Memoir Antique. With that said, the other songs fringe on being Genshin Impact trailer music. Th that's not to say that it's a bad thing, it's just not what I'm looking for. But if you're interested, I'd recommend Raisenka and Beautiful Nightingale. Put it over Zhao's trailer, I guess. The two songs I didn't like were ones that tried to incorporate a more synthetic sound. And when I say synthetic, I literally mean they just added a drum machine. But yeah, yeah, good stuff. A very strong unit. But um, one more thing before I head on. Uh, Shu, Mika, I wish the very best for you two. That includes your fans. All of you. I hope you find the help that you desperately need. Who painted the Mona Lisa? Mona Lisa. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Da Vinci? Hey, uh, you wanna see something cool? Yeah, I, I don't like Twink. Last time round, people pointed out that I mixed up the twins. That was on purpose, and I still can't tell the difference. As for the music itself, people tend to call this brain scratching. No, this is the equivalent to having your corpus callosum severed and now your brain's in two. I'm gonna call this hemisphere Yuta and the other one Hinata. A lot of what I said about Switch and Knights can be said here. You know, instrumental sounds like NCS music, yada 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 yada. I should reappraise Hinata's solo song as the only favorable Twink song. Uh, cause when I compare this to everything else... Yeah, this is pretty good. Fighting Dreamer, from what I understand, is a tribute to Muhammad Ali. My analysis came from these two lyrics. Uh, I, I just don't like the song. It's an earworm, because I say I don't like it, yet I can't stop humming it every now and then. Trick With Treat is a song that couldn't be saved even with an undead feature. We'll get to those guys, don't worry about it. I think, if anything, their presence made the song worse, which is... They don't even have a verse or anything. They're just standing there bopping along and occasionally ad-libbing when the song wants them to. Not to mention those goofy-ass 50s cartoon sound effects. I'm confident that this song's a cursed entity. Listen to it once, and a week later you'll have a not-so-pleasant visit to the morgue. There's the other song where they go, ATTENTION PLEASE! It's just Osu music. I can hear the clicking of the nodes even though I haven't touched the game in years. I just realized now that I might have been too harsh on these guys, so I'll move on by saying Wonder Wonder Toyland is a song I had no harsh feelings towards. The new guys on the block, featuring a colorful cast of... Wait a minute, you're here. Wait, so there's him, and there's also a chef, a deranged loony, and Himeru. The eye does come with a tittle, this is not a typo. I'm gonna start asking for your forgiveness, because this is the part where I say... I don't like Crazy Roulette for the same reason I don't like a majority of Eden songs. Uh, Hellser Spider's gonna have to go into that same pile too. Noisy Beep is an okay song, but someone I know once told me that the main hook, you know the beep, 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 annoys the living hell out of her. I find that so funny, so I'm just going to casually torment this person from here on out. Besides that, I was really shocked with how much I liked Honeycomb Summer. Now, it, it ain't exactly the summer song like Chorus Kid Breeze is, no no, but damn is it really close. Also, the slightly raunchy lyrics were one of the last things I ever expected from a game like this. I thought OnStar lyrics were just 3-5 to five minute long motivational speeches. It's either that or something so needlessly complex that you need a Bachelor of Arts to understand them. I'm looking at you, Double Face and Valkyrie. Yubisaki no Ariadne is an incredibly jarring song, in the sense that the quality here is numerous steps above every other Crazy B song. Honeycomb Summer is still good, mind you, but is it Yubisaki no Ariadne good? If they can pull off more songs like this, then I'm gonna be their number one fan from here on out. You are gay! The sooner you realize that, the better! Hey, I'm dead fast. Let's play hide and seek. So, I hide, and you seek professional help. <laughs> no, pl seriously, please do. The joke about SoundCloud comments at the very start mostly stemmed from you people. Re, please let me suck on your fat, juicy, soft, delicate, smooth, and juicy titties. I want My to suck every single device. of them so hard you guys don't get an idea. I want to stimulate every part of their body. Gay sex, 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 gay sex. I don't speak. Undead P get intense therapy challenge. Be taking care Maybe this behavior's justified since, alongside Valkyrie, this is also one of the best units here. Undead has a few songs that completely fly under most people's radars. Darkness 4 is one such song, and I'm disappointed. Nightless World 2, like, what's up with that? We really need to give these songs some love. And you know what? Valentine's Eve Nightmare, Melody in the Dark, they're just okay songs. I really enjoy Forbidden Rain, but there's a few tidbits that just make me go, huh? Or have me try and hold in my laughter. Before the first chorus, you can hear some woman go, you ready? I have no clue why that's there. And secondly, before each chorus, you can hear the sound of glass breaking, which might not seem like anything at all, 
But oh boy, the internet has destroyed my sense of humor to the point that the sound of glass breaking has me struggling to breathe. But regardless, song's in my top 10. Also, that one song that has Honey Milk in the title is also a good pick for me. For sustained memories, it sounds like a lot of throwback radio music. I'm not smart enough to know about chord progressions, but I know what a 1564 sounds like. I don't like it. I also don't like Destruction Road either. I don't think anyone does. But I'm dead. If you're listening, please drop more songs in the vein of Darkness 4 and Nightless World. I am on my knees right now. Not like that, not like that. But please drop more songs in that vein. Like, please, that would be very nice. That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. You guys do remember that third Valkyrie member that dipped? That's him now. You feel old yet? He's in charge of his own group, and he's back for revenge. Going into this group, I was expecting to quickly grow tired of the overtly tooth-rotting and cutesy music that these guys have. To my surprise, not as much as I thought I would. I still found Maiden Tokimeki and Harenohi Sugar Wave a bit too much for me. Also, uh, fair warning, if you do decide to watch a Rabbit's music video, for the next couple of days or weeks, be prepared to be stalked by choppers or various conspicuously parked vehicles. Anyways, Nosagi March. People swear by the fact that this is their weakest song, and I get it. The song is so hilariously overblown that I just can't help but appreciate it. <laughs> y you wouldn't understand. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. What do you mean? I remember not liking Milky Starry Charm all that much. Although recently, I gave it another listen, and I think I'm starting to come round to this one. And here's a fun fact. Falling Love, It's Wonderland was actually one of the very first OnStar songs I ever heard, back in early 2022 or so. I did like it enough to illegally download it along with a few more tracks, we'll get to those, but I don't think past me for saw himself listening to every other song from the game. Was this self-inflicted, perhaps? <laughs> Quick honorable mention to Joyful Box. Not by its own merits, but because of that one scene in the anime. You know the one. Actually, yeah, I did watch the anime around the same time, but I won't get into that here because I need to talk about Akatsuki. We have Valkyrie, then Undead, and finally, Akatsuki completes the Holy Trinity. Alongside Valkyrie, Akatsuki also has a very distinct aesthetic, because they are very dedicated to their heritage as Japanese men. In fact, they love Japan so much that they once pissed off Western and Korean players. Nice going guys, very cool. Uh, something about war crimes and Taisho era, blah 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 blah. blah. Only a few songs out of this list of 200 entries were ones that I really enjoyed on first listen. Uh, these two tracks, which I can't be bothered to pronounce the name of, were those kinds of songs. While my favorite OnStar songs took at least two to three more listens to really get behind, these two Akatsuki songs were just... Fire on fire. For that second song, I'm just enamored by the work done on both the drums and bass. Firstly, the drums just have this hypnotic rhythm that never lets up. And that bass line. Just listen. This is THE Akatsuki song, their best one. Which is a fitting choice because the song literally has Akatsuki in the title. I also have to mention these two songs, they're just... So good, so good. Oh yeah, Kengeki no Mai was the song that got people quite pissed. What do I have to say about it? Well, beyond its implications, I don't find it to be that interesting. I know people loud it for its jazz swing and whatnot, but I personally don't like it that much. Speaking of, Omoi de Suzuri. I really want to like this song, but it just feels off. Especially the pre-choruses. The singing sounds rough, and the use of panning isn't really helping much either. My feelings on this particular song is an exact inverse of Omoi no Kakera. The verses are a snoozer, but the chorus bangs hard, because it has a Wawa guitar. I might come round to it at some point, but not now. After listening to these songs, I have made a vow to not make any more Ricefield jokes when listening to Akatsuki. Trickstar is the unit we follow throughout the anime, so I'm just gonna assume that they're the main guys. I mean, I did say that Subaru was the face of the All Stars brand last time round, so there's that. Okay, quick scenario. Say you're at a clothing store, right? Think of the music that they play there. 
I'm willing to bet that it sounds exactly like what Finder Girl sounds like. I'm sure that Stippling and Silent Earth would fall into this category too, but I like these more than Finder Girl. Diamond Summer is also another on-star summer song. But it's not as good as Chorus Get Breeze, because it can't be, so that's a from me. Also, the song still sounds like every other Trickstar song, so that's a For the rest of their music, I honestly wanted to avoid the Trickstar music slander bandwagon. But wow, I simply cannot get anything out of their music. Whatever Subaru cooked on his solo, he should not have shared that with the rest of the team. Or Fine for that matter. Oh, yes, I'm accusing Fine for being boring too. You can't stop me. I truly mean it when I say that listening to a song from either of these units gives me instant retroactive amnesia. Taking all of this into account, along with some extra knowledge given to me by watching the anime, I have an epiphany. <laughs> Trickstar vs Fine is just a mid-off, oh my god. Hey guys, look, it's the Power Rangers. We have Fish, Tiger, Fatherly Figure, Zen- and literally me. <laughs> He's so me, man. Oh my god. Out of all the units, I expected to hate Ryusatai the most. Their distant cry level use of orchestral hits and ridiculously bright synths seemed like it would send me over the edge. But no, I guess not. Perhaps my upbringing as a Filipino that watched a lot of anime has stopped me from giving these songs the hard no. Actually, no, that reason applies to any song I like here to begin with. W wait 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 that's also implying I actually like Risetai. Well, Risei Hanabi is actually a personal standout for me, but everything else falls into that same void that Trickstar and Fine fall into. Somehow this hyper-stimulating production is not doing anything for me at all. I'd still place them above the other two because at least they have a more distinct style. Actually wait, hold on. So recently they dropped a music video for the song Relax Paradise. And I just wanted to say that my boy Midori looks so happy in here. I'm so proud of him. And the surprising part is that the song's not that bad either. It's just a bit of dumb fun and whatnot. So I'll give him points for that. And that also means that this is the second Ryusatai song I like. So that's pretty cool. No! 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 <laughs> is it just me, or does Mayoi sing like Shakira but reincarnated as an anime dude? Alkaloid is the other new unit in the game, and out of everyone here at Star Maker, they're the best here. As in, they have three likable songs as opposed to just one. For starters, Subasa Moratorium. I like the more laid-back approach that the song has, from the soft vocals, guitars, and piano. I think it's a nice break from being blasted by big blocks of sound that most OnStar songs are. But diving right back into the noise, we have the other two songs I like. Vermilion, in a weird way, is Alkaloid's own Usagi bar. A bombastic, overblown anthem about giving it your all even when everything seems to be against you. Hysteric Humanoid reminds me of Baby Metal in the weirdest possible ways, and I just cannot explain why. As for every other Alkaloid song, I think you know what I'm gonna say. Alright, that's it for Star Maker. Uh, writing about these guys put me on the verge of an aneurysm, so thanks for that. Hey, I'ma keep it real with y'all. The shuffle units pack some mad heat. Date Plan A to Z was the very first OnStar song I ever heard. Thinking about it now, this might actually beat out Nosagi March for the most overblown and annoyingly loud song. And it's all about going on a date, mind you. But hey, I still like the song anyways. Following that, we have Midnight Butlers. There's a high chance that one of you had an electro swing phase. I know I did when I was 14. Therefore, this song would have been right up my alley. I mean, yeah, the song is good, great even, but there are way better shuffle songs on here. Other shuffle songs in question, Moonlight Disco. I was quite surprised to see a retro style song within the catalog. And for what it's worth, I really enjoy this one. I often found myself replaying that bridge. It's because it's so damn good. Besides the Japanese lyrics, I'd probably be fooled into thinking that this came out in the 70s. Also, the lineup is perfect for a song like this. Yes, that includes the Christian guy. Oh, and did I mention that this is one of my top 5 OnStar songs? Uh, whoopsies. 
Hey, every hey, oh, hold on, everyone, everyone, shut up. Heart Aid Cafeteria and A to Z have the perfect amount of sweetness. These songs are here to calm the beast that rages furiously from within. I hate to break it to you, but we do have some hard misses here. Aww. Paradigm Reversi is essentially an Easter song produced by Twink. I think we all know how a Twink-produced holiday song went last time round. And no, your one and a half second soundbite of Mika going, Asnai Tobikonde, isn't enough to save your song either. <laughs> no serotonin for you then. The other hard miss is Sweet Sweet White Song. This is a Christmas song. Don't care. Have you been naughty or nice? You know, I'm a sucker for absolutely nasty, disgusting slap bass, and this song delivers. So I'm just gonna ignore the fact that this is indeed a Christmas song. But I still wouldn't match it up to any of the other shuffle songs. Because for me, the quickest way to ruin a song is to add a rap section where it doesn't belong. This exact reason is why I didn't like Fist of Soul either. The song to begin with didn't feel as balls to the walls as some of the more rock hard songs from say Undead or Akatsuki were. But the rapping was just the icing on the cake. Cold beef patty, special sauce, lettuce and cheese, pickles and onion. Also, Madara, you got to work on your rapping. You can sing, that's for sure, but wow, you cannot rap for sure. Besides those, if you are new to OnStar's music, I recommend starting here since they have some seriously solid stuff. Here, we have our units combined to make a song together. Some combinations work really well, and some fall flat right after the first notes. Case in point, Switch and Eden. I think you know the drill by this point, the uh, early 2010s K-pop sound that I don't care for, etc etc etc. Lemon Squash Cheers is another song to enter the space of on-star summer songs. Chorus Get Breeze has won my heart by this point, so stop trying. Also, that crash symbol. I've heard that somewhere. You know, a rabbit's collab with literally anyone would have been hella cursed no matter who. Well, at least it was with Doubleface, so it's not that bad. It would have been funny if it was with Undead or Akatsuki. Actually, speaking of which, and to no one's surprise, the best fusion song here is the one between Akatsuki and Undead. Who would have thought? Fire on fire makes, guess what, more fire. Moving down the spectrum a tad, Trickstar and Fine decided to stop their mid-off, had a little bit of a truce, and tried to do a, uh, song together. I also have nothing of substance to say on this either, so uh, let's move on. A lot of the songs that they cover here are mostly big in Japan because, duh, it's a Japanese game. But that also means I doubt I've heard most of these. The most popular song here is USA, racking over 6 million views on the MV. Um, th this is the part where I say that the music video for USA is also a cursed entity. Only this time, instead of dying after a week, you drop dead right after watching it. It really does look like a GTA mod. <laughs> Hang on, I just need to round up all the dudes that watch this channel real quick. There's probably like three of you, but this is really important. So, boys, does this sound like Eurobeat to you? I don't know about you, but I reckon a small tempo boost should do the trick. Listening to these cover songs, I was really surprised by the inclusion of Racing Into the Night. I found it odd that it's here because, well, the song's about suicide. <laughs> but, but then again, the original song bangs hard. So, <coughs> so that automatically makes its subsequent cover the best one here. We also have a rare sight for both Trickstar and Eden. They looked at Knights the Phantom Thief and said, we can do that. And guess what? They did a good job. Replay is a really great cover song, second to Racing Into the Night, of course. That flute and overall more jazzy sound is actually a lot more better than the original for me. Pat yourselves on the back for that one, guys. You finally did something good. Here's a controversial one. I remember listening to Yukio Seishun Kad and thinking, wow, this is ass. Cut to a day later, and I found out it's the ending track for Code Geass. Uh, um, uh, I'm so, 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 so sorry. I regret ever calling the song bad. It was a little bit of trolling, I swear. Okay, honestly speaking, I loved Code Geass when I was a kid. But when you asked me about the music back then, the most I remember is the first opening. It's gonna take quite a while for me to come round to this song, but until then, 
I'm so so sorry. Wait, 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 wait. That, that's it? Wait, am I free now? Let's go! Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait. Uh, I still need to close out the video properly. Just give me a second, please.